Let's go get ready to learn with new different ideas in this video lesson. You will be with Teacher G. Great day, everyone. Welcome to Teacher G's class. This is Teacher Gerald, and I will be your teacher in Art 6. At the end of the lesson, learners are expected to realize that art processes, elements, and principles still apply even with the use of new technologies. Appreciates the elements and principles applied in commercial arts. What I know. Tell whether if the following pictures were drawn by hand or by computer. Let us have the first picture. Is it drawn by hand or by computer? Correct. This is drawn by hand. Now, let's take a look at this picture. Is it drawn by hand or by computer? Correct. This is drawn by a computer. Lesson 1 is Let's create graphic arts with computer. Technology nowadays, especially in this time of pandemic and the so-called new normal, plays a vital role on the part of the students. COVID-19 is not a hindrance to learn new things. Today, Along with the traditional arts, digital art is becoming ubiquitous because of the presence and availability of gadgets, technology, and the internet. The only difference is the medium used between traditional and digital art, but the elements and principles is still the same. In this lesson, you will learn how different elements and principles in traditional art can be applied to digital art. You will also learn the different tools used in some of the common software for digital art. There's also various software that can be installed in the computer or laptop and can be used in digital art. What's in? Now I will be showing you pictures and you are going to tell whether if the following item is used for traditional arts or digital art. Now let us have the first picture. Is it being used in traditional art or digital art? Correct. This is used for digital arts. Now let's take a look at the second picture. Correct. This is used in traditional arts. These are colored pencils. How about the third picture? Correct. This is used in traditional art. This is a ruler and a pencil. How about this one? Correct. This is used in digital art. And of course, the last picture we have, very good. This is used in digital arts. From the pictures that I have presented to you, I know that you get some of the ideas between the difference of traditional and the digital art. Now, let's take a look at this picture. As we observed in the picture, we could see elements of arts. Lines, shapes, and colors are used. The question is, is it drawn by hand or by computer? Well, whether it is drawn by a computer or hand, still we can state that the elements and principles of arts can still be applied even with the use of technology the elements 
and principles used in traditional arts or art created by hand using a medium like paint, charcoal, pencil, or clay still apply even with the use of technology. Now, let's talk about computer-generated visual media. In visual media, computers are used today for desktop publishing, such as magazines, books, newspapers, brochures, flyers, pamphlets, and other print media. And also, computers are used for graphic design television, commercials, t-shirt designs, company and organizational logos, and more. So that is how visual media uses computer for today. Now let's talk about 2D art. This is imitating traditional art using computer graphic software. Drawings, portraits, even landscapes can be created using the computer and then printed on paper to produce two-dimensional art. Now let us see this example. How about this one? These are examples of two-dimensional arts. Now let's talk about 3D graphic or 3D arts. 3D graphics are achieved via the process of designing objects from geometric and polygonal shapes or more technically termed as nerves curves to create three-dimensional objects and scenes. These are used in various media such as film, television, print, animation, rapid prototyping, games or simulation, and special visual effects. Now, let's take a look at these examples. And these are the examples of 3D arts or the three-dimensional arts. Now, let's be familiar with the different pioneers of digital art from 1950s until 1970. Let's have Desmond Paul Henry. We also have A. Michael Noll. And also, we have Namjoon Pike. And also, we have John Whitney. And also, last but not the least, Charles Shuri. And we also have our notable Filipino digital artist. We have Anthony Ocampo, Vincent Rafael Aceyo, Antonio Gorordo, Rodolfo Samonte, and among others. Now, what is Inkscape? What do you think is this? Inkscape is a free and open source vector graphics editor for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. It offers a rich set of features and is widely used for both artistic and technical illustrations such as cartoons, clip art, logos, typography, diagramming, and flow charting. It uses vector graphics to allow for sharp printouts and rendering at unlimited resolution and is not bound to a fixed number of pixels like raster graphics. Inkscape uses the standardized SVG file format as its main format, which is supported by many other applications including web browsers. So in short, Inkscape is used in graphic arts. You can also download the Inkscape for free and I'll put the link in the description below. Now let's take a look at the interface of Inkscape. This is the interface of Inkscape. We will be describing the different tools of the Inkscape. 
The first one is the application menu bar wherein it is along the top provides general menu options. Some are similar to other software programs. It is just like file and then save, edit to copy, and etc. The next one is what we call the tool control bar. Just below adjusts to the currently selected tool. It displays the tools options. Vertically on the left, the toolbox contains the main drawing tools. Only one tool can be selected at once. The large blank area is the canvas where the image is edited. A black outline represents the visible page area. On the right of the window, there are two toolbars. To the left is the commands bar which gives quick access to common commands, which are also available via the drop-down menus. If not all the commands are shown, there is a right-facing arrow that gives access to the hidden choices. To the right is the snap control bar. We suggest you deactivate snapping for now by pressing the topmost button in the bar or by pressing the percent button. There are also rulers at the top and on the left of the canvas to help with grid and guideline placement. Scroll bars are also available to the right and bottom to move around on the canvas. The color palette is near at the bottom of the window. Its most basic usage is to change the fill color of an object. At the very bottom, the status bar provides information such as the colors on the selected object, layers, cursor's coordinates, and zoom level. It also contains a field where Inkscape can display helpful texts such as the number and types of selected objects or tips about the keyboard shortcuts and usage hints. Dialogues for specific functionality are available will by default appear attached to the right of the canvas in the docking area. Now let's talk about Inkscape tools, its usage and definition. Selector tool is a fundamental tool in the program since almost everything must be selected before it can be edited. Working such Working much like a hand, the selector tool also moves, scales, skews, and rotates objects. Shapes tool are useful for many drawing techniques. You can quickly get awesome results for some elementary shapes. To draw a rectangle, select the rectangle tool from the toolbox on the left. Click and drag the mouse diagonally using the same motion as when dragging a selection box. To draw a circle or ellipse, click and drag the mouse diagonally using the same motion as when dragging a selection box. The circle will appear immediately after you release the mouse button. To draw a perfect circle, hold down the control key while you drag the mouse. Holding shift will start drawing from the center of the shape. Star Polygon Tool is perhaps the most exciting tool for beginners and sets Inkscape apart from other vector editing software. It offers numerous creative options which can be edited on the canvas with ease. To draw a spiral, click and drag with the mouse on the canvas. When the left mouse button is released, the spiral will be finished you will notice two diamond-shaped handles on the spiral. 3D Box Tool draws a three-dimensional box. To understand how it works, it helps to know a little bit about drawing in perspective. This tool is of interest to people who want to draw architecture or interiors. It makes it really easy to create furniture or rooms because it automatically creates perspective by making use of varnishing points. 
pencil tool depends on the settings in its controls bar. To draw with this tool, press the left mouse button and drag the mouse around the canvas. The pencil will leave a green trace that follows the location of the mouse cursor. When you let go of the mouse button, the shape you created will get its stroke and or its feel if you have one set. This tool's purpose is to draw paths. Multiple paths drawn next to and on top of each other form a design. For a start, 1. Click with the left mouse button to create the first point of the path. Move the mouse and click again. Repeat this for as many nodes that you want to draw. All your nodes will be connected by straight lines. 3. To finish the path, right-click with the mouse. Calligraphy Tool What a goose quill was in antiquity is Inkscape's calligraphy tool in the digital world. Ideally, it should be used with a graphics tablet and stylus with one hand on the graphics tablet and the other one on the keyboard, which moves the canvas so one can write without interruption. Node Tool The second most used tool in Inkscape is the Node Tool. It will be your friend when you need to edit a path. Node Tool offers a number of options we haven't seen yet. In this chapter, we will go through them by looking at the different icons in its tool controls bar. Tweak Tool is the ideal tool for illustrators who first draw their designs on paper then scan and vectorize their work. With it, you can modify paths on the canvas using numerous options without ever switching tools. Dropper Tool To use the Dropper Tool, select an object, then activate the Dropper Tool by clicking on its icon. Then click on the canvas on an area where it has the color that you want to apply. The selected object's color will change accordingly. Gradient Tool Gradient Tool can be activated in the toolbar. To apply gradient to an object, you need to first select an object, then click and drag over the object with the Gradient Tool. Text Tool Once the Text Tool is active, you will have two options at your hands about how to create a text. When you want to add a text that consists only of a single word or a short expression, the easiest way to add it is to 1. Left-click on the canvas to place the cursor at the desired position. 2. Type the text directly afterwards. The text will all be put into a single line unless you hit Enter to continue in the next line. And that is the definition and usage of Inkscape tools. Now let's sum up what we have learned today. First one is that people can create artworks even with the use of computer. Digital art is a general term for a wide variety of artistic works and methods that use digital technology. Lines, shapes, colors, and textures are elements common to both traditional handmade art and modern digital art. The principle of art, rhythm, harmony, contrast, and emphasis apply even with the use of technology. Inkscape is a free open source software used for digital arts. It has many functional tools used to create awesome digital art that can be used in commercial purposes. And that is our learnings for today. This concludes our lesson for today. I hope you learned something from it. Once again, this is Teacher Gerald and see you for another video lesson. See you! Don't forget to like share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. Goodbye!